This week in Bevy, we see experimental weasel support land, which is an exciting, very early look into some of the community-driven extensions to WGSL. The transform propagation system also gets a nice optimization for static scenes, run system becomes recursively callable, and the Bevy remote protocol takes steps towards open RPC support. We also see a visual history of the development of Settletopia, a 3D GeForce-enabled HUD, and Curveball, a curve-generating tool for Neverball level developers. That brings us to Weasel. Weasel, or WESL, is a community-driven portable superset of WGSL, and the pre-MVP 0.1.x version has been released. It intends to add features like imports, conditional compilation, even a packaging system, and more to WGSL, which roughly aligns with how Bevy uses WGSL in general. 17953 introduces Bevy support for Weasel as a shader source, which enables loading WESL shaders. This is experimental support, so don't expect to mix shaders via Naga Oil yet, but do use this as a chance to check out the new shader material weasel example and some of the new weasel language syntax for imports and such. 17521 brought us new spawning APIs, and a large number of the bevy examples now take advantage of the new children macro that came with those APIs. This includes computed states, custom transitions, render primitives, breakout, and more. Speaking of examples, Bevy's examples contain some helper code, especially when the functionality isn't directly related to the example's purpose, but it's still useful to have, like camera controllers in non-camera examples. 18288 adds a new examples helpers directory for library-style examples. Currently, this includes a camera controller and UI widgets, but may also extend in the future to other non-application-based examples. The Bevy remote protocol grows another endpoint, and this is a first step towards open RPC support for the Bevy remote protocol, 18.068 introduces an rpc.discover endpoint that follows the spec. And speaking of spawning APIs, spawning related entities is a recent addition to the Bevy spawn APIs, for example using children spawn. 18.259 introduces a more direct way to spawn a VEC of bundles by implementing spawnable list. Previously, this was achievable through the use of spawn iter, which required taking the VEC of bundles that you wanted to spawn and iterating over them in user land. Now this happens behind the scenes and you can pass the VEC directly. As of 18076, run system will requeue the system's command queue, enabling the ability to recursively call run system. There's a nice demo of this in the PR, so definitely go check it out. But otherwise this is run system. You can now just call run system from within run system. And 18202 introduces a new set of saturation APIs encapsulated in a saturation trait. Note that if you use those APIs and you're not using a color in a color space which has native saturation components, the color is converted to HSLA and then back. And the ability to test upcoming WGPU features in Bevy is an important capability that is made easier this week through 18.099, which decouples some of the rendering internals, allowing for the testing of newer WGPU versions. And another speed boost in transform propagation lands this week with 18.093, optimizing the algorithm to mark static subtrees. This means scenes with largely static transforms see a big speed up. And following a great write up, 17962 reduces the duplication between the into system configs and into system set configs traits. This potentially sets the groundwork for 14195, which would be supporting run if on observers, although that is future work and we don't know if that will end or not. And of course, Alice's merge train is a maintainer level view into active PRs and how the bevy sausage is made which is now on Blue Sky and on Mastodon for wherever you want to stay up to date. And first up in the showcases, this is Vulcan CUDA Interop. This demo is running as a node in the render graph using an image segmentation model running in PyTorch via Py03. The main render texture is exported from Vulkan using WGPU HAL to CUDA and then exposed as a CUDA array to Torch in a Python script. There's a whole lot going on here and it's pretty fantastic to see how flexible Bevy in the render graph is. Next up, we've got the results of a hybrid ray tracing shader. This was using Shady Bug for development, which we've talked about in previous issues. This hybrid ray tracing shader is ready for GDC now and working on an iPad. And then we've got an update from Computronium, which is an automation game like Factorio or Satisfactory with an emphasis on computer hardware and networks. This week, walls can now be placed in the world and snapped to foundations. Servers can be added to and removed from rack slots. A new sprint ability was added and the first music track was composed. And this is Curveball, which is a cool little curve generating tool. The original intention was for Neverball level developers, and you can use it on the web or check out the Git repo. Next up, we get to check out a 3D heads up display and camera affected by G-forces. 
The 3D text in this demo is from Bevy Rich Text 3D. And then we've got a demo of a mesh slicing a torus with an EUE based debug UI to control the slicing. There isn't too much more information about this one, so we'll just have to wait for another update. And continuing the trend of no standard, this is Conway's Game of Life on an ESP32C6. This uses Bevy No Standard and ESP HAL 1.0, and it runs on a 1.47 inch ESP32C6 wave share display. It's got a decent frame rate, including DMA and frame buffer, and later in the week got updated to run on a C3 as well. And next up, we've got a demo for a composable ability system. In this system, items are entities with affixes, as they're called, which can be equipped by another entity. The item can then pass on the effects to the equipping entity. And this is a true sneak peek, which honestly might be a little bit hard to get a grasp of after the image compression and the video compression you're going to see this through. But this is a sneak peek at DLSS alongside the rest of the options in the Bevy anti-aliasing example. Please note that this is not coming in 0.16 but is more of a sneak peek at future features. And then we've got some crowd rendering for an upcoming game. In this case, the crowds walk around the outer part of the square, as well as the offshoot platform you can see in the middle. And I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed Star Fox 64 when I was younger. This is the first third of the first level of Moonshot Mission, which is a game inspired by Star Fox 64, and it has about 12 levels planned out. I'm looking forward to seeing more of this one myself in the future. And this is someone's progress in learning vertex and fragment shaders with the goal of making audio reactive visualizers with Bevy and WGSL. The code for this one was shared in the Discord thread if you want to find out more. And otherwise, it's on to Bevy Old TV Shaders 2D Camera Support. This is 2D camera support for an old TV style shader that can optionally apply the Bevy Old TV Shader effect to UI and text as well. And then we've got upgrades to a foliage shader that brings faked cloud darkening noise, fog, and the ability to wave in the wind. And To Build a Home got more work this week in building a shopping menu. This is a weekend project for To Build a Home, which is the functioning shopping menu built with Bevy UI. There are still some gameplay decisions about how the shopping is actually going to take effect. And in the meantime, we'll take a look at some dice rolls. This is Avian 3D rolling infinite dice for hex roll three, Hexroll is essentially a procedural sandbox generator mixed together with a virtual tabletop. And finally, in our showcases, a code for a cause jam entry, Onward V2 takes advantage of Blender's custom properties and Bevy's support for GLTF extras. And that brings us to the crate releases, starting off with Bevy Radix Sort. Bevy Radix Sort is a low-level GPU-based Radix Sort implementation that's optimized for sorting U32 key-value pairs. If you're interested in more sorting algorithms like this one, Check out the state of the art GPU sorting repo that we have on the website, including a WGSL implementation of one sweep. And next up, we've got Bevy ECS Tiled V0.6. Bevy ECS Tiled is a plugin for working with 2D tile maps created with the Tiled Map Editor. It relies upon the official Tiled Rust bindings to parse and load tile map files and the Bevy ECS Tile Map Crate to perform rendering. Bevy ECS Tiled aims to provide a simple and ergonomic workflow by using Tiled as an editor when working on Bevy 2D games. 0.6 brings support for Tiled World, the ability to aggregate physics colliders from tiles to improve global performance, better support for infinite maps, and a rework of loading events to use both entity-scoped observers and regular events. And then we've got Bevy Save. Bevy Save enables you to easily save and load your entire application state, including resources. One crate we see quite a bit of is Bevy Replicon, which is a crate for server authoritative networking. 0.31 brings connected clients represented as entities, and a switch from bin code to postcard. As a result of preparing for a talk on the crate at Bevy Meetup number 9, the Quick Start Guide was rewritten as well. The Quick Start Guide now contains details on how to write a messaging backend or implement client-side prediction. And Bevy Mod Outline is a mesh outlining crate that supports both the vertex extrusion and jump flood methods. 0.9.1 brings a new double-sided outlining mode for non-manifold geometry, and support for outlining shapes defined using the alpha channel of a texture. We're gonna go from dark to a light page for the next two. And the first is Programming Isn't Enough, which is a devlog look into a year-long development effort for a digital competitive card game. The devlog topic is how focusing on programming isn't enough for a commercial game. And then we've got a largely visual history of the development of Settletopia, which can now be wishlisted on Steam. Seeing this kind of post is actually really cool, and I wish that more projects had pages like this that showcase the history and gave a look into how things came together. And that's it for this week. As always, we have all the merged pull requests over on the website if you want to take a look at anything that we might have left out, and I'll see you in the next one.